Hey there, friends. Welcome back. What up, peeps? How's it going? How's it hanging? What's the haps? What's cracking? Whatever your preferred introduction might be. <laughs> it's a Wednesday afternoon, November 20th, 2024, and I'm here to uh, talk a little bit about bullshit. At least, not putting up with bullshit. And I guess this would lead me to why that's important, because we deal with enough bullshit already in the sense that when you have to deal with being a teenager, then you have to deal with being a, a grown up, uh, learning how to get into the workforce and then getting into your 30s and maybe having some depressive episodes, not feeling well, not feeling yourself, and then get into your 40s and you hit some midlife crisis. And then they say that in your 50s, things start to get better. And by your 60s, you're you're doing you're having fun. And the golden years are golden for a reason. It's because people have overcome that mid 40s hump, which is where I'm at. In fact, I turned 49 this weekend. And uh, You know, it's been an interesting year. <laughs> I mean, it was right around this time last year when my mom died. And it was, she wasn't feeling well and she'd been sick lately, you know, but I, nobody expected what happened. So it was kind of a shocker. And so it's been one full year now and they say that, you know, you don't really even process it or grieve until, you know, for a lot of people anyway, everyone's different, of course. But for like a year, you know, and I'm only saying this because all of you have faced some kind of bullshit in your own lives where, you know, everything just hits you at once. Maybe you lose your job and your house and then uh, your pet dies or maybe you lose your house in a fire and you lose your whole family. Right. And uh, <laughs> there are some people who can fight through a lot of pain like that and some people who the slightest little thing happens to them and they just, you know, snap. Everyone's unique and I acknowledge this. And however, I also realize that as we grow, you know, in our development in life, in our psyche, and we start to really understand what it means to be a human, whatever that might be to you, um, you start to develop kind of these attitudes about what's right, what's wrong, who's right and wrong, what kind of people you want to interact with naturally. And there are always going to be people who will pick on you just because you're different. I found this to be pretty universal. With all groups, it doesn't matter if you're even just the cool guy, you know, or Maybe you're a scientist and people hate scientists. You know, you could be a preacher and people hate religion and therefore hate you. You can't get away from it. You know, I remember hearing once that somebody will always dislike you. But it's funny, funny enough, actually, coincidentally, because I was going to talk about this. And then my brother actually just sent me a text just a few minutes ago in our group chat. And it was a picture of Danny DeVito peeking out of the couch cushions. And it was a meme. Uh, that said, uh, you know, basically the guy who just pops in to comment on a video to say something negative. And uh, my brother said, yeah, that's me on Josh's channel. And, and it's funny because it's not only true that he's only popped in to say negative shit, but I've done that to him and to other people. You know, maybe not him. He doesn't upload videos. But to people online, if I see a post that is inflammatory or I feel is wrong, of course I'm going to comment on it. And I think that's just part of good discourse. I, I, you know, as, as long as you don't take it too seriously. But text really can be misinterpreted, you know. And there's so much bullshit out there where people want to argue and fight over the pettiest things. How do we get wrapped up in this crap when we've got enough problems already? Do we just seek conflict? Is that our nature? Our natural desire for drama and war? Because, you know, that's part of my philosophy, what I've been trying to understand 
philosophically rather is you know the rationality of man and what is normal which you know that's a rhetorical question there there is a you know perhaps a norm with certain traits but norm would just mean what the most people do it most people act that way um it might how about it say it's, it's normal for people to sleep right uh most people sleep there are some people who sleep very little but as far as i know everyone sleeps and uh maybe there's one or two guys exception in the world right that's still not normal right there is a norm there but when it gets to more obscure things about humans oh what's normal as far as you know your sex or your beliefs or uh, your pol your politics you know think of you know how divided we get on just wanting to be right and arguing with somebody else about it not knowing what the you know of course people are informed on half the topic that they're talking about a lot of the time myself included because we get wrapped up in something and we want to be right um, and i've trained myself over the years to overcome that and that's part of my growth and wisdom that I'm trying to build is to learn how to not just not argue, you know, because I love to argue. I thought about this yesterday at work and I was like, you know, that's not a fault. It's just part of who I am. You know, I, I, I love to debate things. If I don't think something's true, then I'm going to call it out. But at the same time, do I not play the devil's advocate at some times? I try not to. I try not to say, start disliking a person just because they joined a political team I don't like. There's a kind of like that way with like RFK. And I was talking with somebody about that. I was like, I still like RFK. You know, I don't, you know, yeah, you, you have to work with other people. It's just how it is. Um, and, but, but there are, is in certain instances guilt by association with certain, you know, groups and institutions. It doesn't mean there isn't corruption elsewhere. And there most definitely is. And always has been. And if we continue down this path of self-deceit and propaganda, we will continue to argue stupid points online that don't really mean much to us. Or maybe they do, but they're not as important as we think they are. And I know this is very subjective. That's another acknowledgement we have to make, is that one person values something more than another person. They might not say it. They will, a lot of the times, not say it, ever. Definitely never say that they value one life over another. Or, you know, but there are plenty who will say it, you know, that, you know, they, they would, you know, sacrifice a million brown people for one of their people which hey i get it you know this this comes down to your own moral opinions but religion plays a big role in how people view each other and assumptions about one another and for those of us outside of that you know those groups it makes you wonder it makes me wonder you know how much better the world could be if we didn't have these religious arguments about who has a monopoly on the truth or morality other than what the average public thinks we all agree that you shouldn't harm each other you shouldn't be an asshole for no reason or abuse anybody and uh, if you mess with the kids you're going to get slapped hard so you know that's pretty much a societal agreement that we have we tend to take care of each other after disasters. We take care of each other during, you know, major crises. And we bond together when there's an adversary that's external, such as after 9-11. And I was thinking about all the American flags and the pickup. Pickups everywhere and in houses and yards. And everybody was like, you know, we didn't know the details, but... We knew that somebody had done this and we were told that they were, you know, it was Osama and his people and uh, 
yeah, Americans said, we have an enemy that's somewhere else now and we can stick together. It didn't last, you know, months, months maybe. But uh, I remember that camaraderie. And the funny thing is, when a country's united, it's very hard for politicians to, you know, bullshit and weasel their way around as easily. So what you have to do is have a not informed public because if people are all on the same side it's easy for them to share something their government did which if you know a republican shares it with a democrat they might ignore it just because it's from a republican and vice versa right so we have people who don't want to accept information or take on any new ideas because they're afraid that they might be cast out of their news group or whatever and so be it, you know, people want to get paid, but it's all a manufactured, you know, media paradigm. Pretty much everybody is sucked into it and believes basically these sound bites and the bullshit that they hear. I love, you know, it really is Orwellian, but it's by choice, not by force. That's the interesting thing. So anyhow, it's a weird time. I came home early today because I finished the job I was doing and I had a couple I ideas of videos I wanted to make and I sat around for like an hour and didn't make one and I was like, you know, why am I still making YouTube videos? And um, I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Just turn on the camera and record because... I need to keep my own flow going, I guess. So anyway, it's kind of a ramble today. I guess I'm getting back into the groove. I've got a couple of things I want to talk about that are a little deeper than this. But I, the point I really wanted to get at, I guess, was dealing with bullshit online and putting up with all the people, then having to deal with bullshit at work having to put up with all the people, wherever you work, you know. Um, fortunately, I work with good people. You know, I'm a carpenter, and there's only usually a couple workers there. We have a smaller crew, like seven people, but they're spread over like three different places. So I work by myself quite a bit, too. And uh, But when, I, when I've worked jobs that are very crowded, I, I just, I don't know, I have a hard time with it. I can't. I can't do it. Anyway, um, yeah, that's about it. I need to regain my thoughts. I'm obviously kind of stumbling here. I wanted to say thank you to uh, Umet Kandemir, my newest patron. He's like awesome, and I want to say I appreciate you. Uh, I have a Patreon account. I also have this Buy Me a Coffee link, and I have a, a podcast called 15 Minute Free Thinking. And it's a blast. I need to get my microphone out and record one. I have a couple on the back burner that I haven't uploaded yet. Um, it's easy to get behind in life. You know, we get distracted. There's a lot going on. For me, it's like working full time is one thing, but the reason I haven't been making videos is kind of multi. There's a multiple reasons. Let's just say when I'm feeling social, I want to make videos. When I'm feeling internal, I want to keep shit to myself. And I've been working in my head a lot lately and come to some just amazing revelations continuously. Um, it's like, I don't know, it's difficult to explain, but can't, I guess. But anyway, always working towards understanding myself and the world better because that's what life's all about and to be able to share honestly without just you know i guess without wasting my own time or other people's which perhaps i'm doing all the time i suppose if i make a video and, and you watch it then you know you're the sucker, man. <laughs> sometimes. 
sometimes it's just a ramble. Peace out.